Throughout the programme, we're getting reaction to the elevation of Boris Johnson, the election by Conservative Party members, of a new Conservative leader. Tomorrow, Boris Johnson will become Prime Minister. But is he your Prime Minister? 0345 6060 973. Uh, let's return to College Green at Westminster, where uh, more politicians are waiting to speak to us. Uh, Jacob Rees Mogg, the Conservative MP for North East Somerset, is standing by. How hot is it out there? Yeah, it's quite warm. Do you want to take your jacket off? No, no, it's not that warm. No. How, how warm would it have to be for you to take your jacket off? I don't know. It's never really a problem I've faced. I was very impressed by the um, armed police on duty, and as I was leaving the Palace of Westminster, they said to me, you must be hot. And considering the amount of kit they're wearing, they were definitely hotter than I was. Well, um, is Boris Johnson going to be a, a good Prime Minister or a terrific Prime Minister? Oh, I think he'll be a terrific Prime Minister. I think he has extraordinary capabilities, a remarkable charisma and a clear vision of what he wants to do. How important is charisma? It's very important, I think. It's such a key um, leadership skill that it um, encourages people to follow where the leader wants to go. It makes it possible to win elections, which is uh, an essential part of being a leader in a democratic age. And it gives somebody that optimism that is so important in delivering policies, that if you set out to fail, you are bound to fail. If you set out optimistically and positively, you won't always succeed, but at least you give yourself a good chance. Uh, we just uh, heard from uh, Sammy Wilson of the Democratic Unionist Party, who is uh, already prepared to countenance, if necessary, an extension to the October 31st deadline if the uh, I's have to be dotted and the T's uh, crossed in negotiations with the EU. How much of an extension beyond October the 31st are you prepared to countenance? Well, it's not really what I'm prepared to countenance. Well, that's what, my question. But I, I know it is, but I'm, uh, give me a moment, I'll answer your question. Well, no, you, you immediately what, started by avoiding it. No, no, I didn't. Patience. Uh, it's what Boris said in his leadership campaign, uh, that Boris made it absolutely clear that if you kick the can, you kick the bucket. Mm. He made it absolutely clear that the 31st of October was his deadline, mm. uh, and I support him in that. So you're not prepared to accept any extension beyond October the 31st? Uh, I'm supporting what Boris Johnson has said. Oh dear, this is the kind of circular talk that helped get him elected as a winner, isn't it? No, I don't think it is. I think you've asked me a perfectly reasonable question. And you've I've refused answered. to answer it? No, I haven't. You're making a classic mistake that interviewers do make. I've given you an answer that you didn't want. That's not the same as not answering your question, as you know perfectly well. No, I know perfectly well that I'm asking you a very reasonable question about whether which you're prepared to I countenance an extension. Answered. And what you're explaining is, is what Boris Johnson's position is, which you support. That's it's right. It's not the same thing. It is exactly the same thing. Sammy Wilson was happy to tell me he's prepared to countenance an extension I, beyond October the 31st. I didn't hear Why aren't you? With Mr. Wilson. I'm sorry, sir. Well, I didn't take my word for it. I don't listen to every word that is broadcast by you, though I enjoy listening to LBC very greatly. So what is the answer to the question? If it's October the 31st, do or die, and that's a central, the central argument that uh, Boris Johnson put forward in an effort to get elected. Which I'm supporting. I, I, I understand that you support sure. him, that's perfectly clear. My question to you is now, my, my next question, is uh, what will happen if we haven't left the EU on November the 1st? Uh, well, um, the um, Conservative Party and the country would be in a considerable degree of difficulty because um, Boris Johnson has made it clear that we will have left by then. Uh, the advantage to the Brexit Party will be very considerable. And if you split the vote between the Brexit Party and the Conservative Party, the only beneficiary is the Labour Party. And that threatens the country with a government led by Jeremy Corbyn, which to my mind would be disastrous for the nation. Would you still support Boris Johnson if the UK fails to leave the EU on October 31st? And Boris Johnson has said that we will leave by the 31st, so ask me on the 1st. Mm. Because you see, the thing is, Theresa May, as some of your colleagues yeah. repeatedly pointed out, said more than 108 times at the dispatch box in the House of Commons that we'd uh, leave the EU uh, in March, uh, and that didn't happen. So you'll forgive me if I'm slightly sceptical about what party leaders say. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you're, you're right to be, because Theresa May did say it a very so large So please stop repeating it to me and no, tell me what you think would uh, happen. What, what, what I'm saying, if you would allow answers to be given to your question... I'm not going to allow answers to be avoided. Uh, it hasn't been avoided, you just didn't like it, as I said a moment ago. And those two are clearly different uh, concepts, even if you refuse to accept it. Um, Boris Johnson believes that Brexit is beneficial for the country. He wants to do it. Theresa May always viewed it as a Remainer as a problem to be managed. That is the fundamental difference, which is why I believe Boris Johnson's promise, and indeed Theresa May's turned out to be false. But I do believe what Boris Johnson is saying. Why do people have trouble trusting Boris Johnson? 
I don't know. You've never trusted him. I remember you... I beg your pardon? Well, you had a very disagreeable interview with him some years ago. So I was every... doing my job. Is that right? Yes. You called him a nasty piece of work, didn't you? Is that your I, job? I asked him a question. I said, you're rude, a nasty piece of work, it? It aren't quite, you? It was Having quite... presented to him evidence that was put to him in a it television quite... documentary that, that it week. It was quite rude. It was quite aggressive. You made it clear you're not a fan in your interviewing style. Forgive so me. I think people Forgive know me. I you're... think you're misunderstanding I how interviewing I works. I think you don't like the fact that you're partial and people know this and they know you're hostile to Boris Johnson and it's important by LBC, asking the questions oh by s phrasing them in that extraordinarily hostile and if i may say so ill-mannered way by in saying, temperate way intemperate accusing him of being a nasty piece of work that was really quite extraordinary wasn't and that it? that that betrays what i think of him does it are you ashamed of that interview nick bowles in our conversation now you're not said, answering the question i just said are you ashamed of that interview and you avoided the question say so there's one rule for the goose and another for the gander I'm, Is i that? was very happy with the interview oh you were Calling somebody a nasty piece of work. I put it to him in a question. Seemed to be a pretty, pretty partial interview. I put it to him in a question. You understand the difference between a statement and a question, do you? Very often the two are lied, as you know. Lied? Allied. Allied, forgive Allied. me. Allied. We're coming Allied. back to trust then. Nick Bowles had no trouble saying, and he's worked with Boris Johnson, that he doesn't trust him. Do you? Mr Bowles has left the Conservative Party. Yes, I trust Boris Johnson. It took a long time to get to that answer. You had no, a go at me didn't. instead. No, it didn't. I'm more than happy to say I trust Boris Johnson. I've said it many times before. I'll say it again. Thanks so much for doing that for us. It's a great pleasure and a joy to come on your programme. Thank you so much. Thank you. Jacob Rees-Mogg, Conservative MP for North East Somerset. Um,